Welcome back to Precalculus. Today we're going to take a look at fractions. And this will be addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division of fractions. So, if you need to brush up on this, here is your video. Got some terminology first. A fraction is called a quotient. When you divide a number and you get a result, it's always called a quotient, and fractions really are just a number divided by another. So the top number is always going to be your numerator. Your bottom is going to be your denominator. I don't have any tricks to remembering which one's which, just when you get used to it, you realize, hey, top's numerator, bottom is denominator. So those are some terminology that I'll be using in pretty much everything I ever say about fractions. So let's start with multiplication and division, because these are easier than addition, trust me. So when you multiply fractions, and you have two numbers, and they're being multiplied, you know, 2 over 3 times 3 over 4. It's very simple. Just multiply the top. This will be 2 times 3 all over 3 times 4. And then you get the result 6 over 12. And if you want, you can simplify it to 1 half. But I'm never usually super picky about that unless I say simplify. So... If you don't want to simplify, and I didn't say simplify, you don't have to simplify. Okay. Now what about dividing? I want 3 halves divided by 1 half. Okay, what does it mean to divide by a fraction? Well, really, this is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. So this is 3 halves divided... Or, 3 halves times 2 over 1. So it's a terminology I use there. Reciprocal. Reciprocal? I think that's how you spell reciprocal. I don't know, I've never actually spelled it before. So, basically, when you have A over B, its reciprocal is going to be B over A. And you can usually write this reciprocal as a fraction raised to the power negative one but again we'll get there when we get to exponents but when you divide you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator so you flip the denominators numerator and denominator you know a little bit confusing uh, think of it like let's say we have a divided by b all over c divided by d think of this as like a mirror. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it around the mirror. So the numerators, C, is going to go to this denominator because it's closer, and this D is going to move all the way up to the numerator. So when we flip it over, we get AD over BC when we multiply. So more informally, I guess you'd have A over B times d over c and then you can multiply them together and get ad over bc so that's sort of one way you can think of it if you're not so comfortable with this idea and if you're thinking okay hold on a second i have three halves divided by one half what does this mean well here's what we're saying we have one object and we have half an object so here's one here's a half Together, this is three halves. We want to know how many halves go into this. So, well, here's one half, here's one half, and here's one half. So we have three halves that go into three halves. So I really should write this as three halves. So that's sort of what the division looks like. That's, that's the intuitive answer of why you get the answer three because three of these halves goes into three halves. Okay, what about adding fractions? This is where things can get tricky. So when you have a common denominator, then you're good. If we have two thirds plus five thirds, because we're adding thirds, what we get is two plus five all over three, which is just equal to seven thirds. So that's okay, because we have the same denominator. When you don't have the same denominator, 
things get trickier because we have to have the same denominator. So what we do is we do this cool cross multiplication trick. So what we do is we take this one half and because the denominator of the second term is three, we're going to multiply by three divided by three. Then we're gonna add one third, but because we need a common denominator, we're going to multiply the one third by two over two because that's the denominator in the first term. So here we're gonna get three over six plus two over six when we multiply out the respective parts. And now because they had the same common denominator, we can just say, okay, that's the same thing as three plus two divided by six, which is just equal to five sixths. So there we have it. That is a nice way to find a common denominator. What you can also do is you can say, okay, hold on a second. Let's take one half plus one third. And we can say, okay, what's the lowest common multiple of two and three? So we could say, okay, let's list out some numbers here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And we have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. And then we can say, okay, well, the closest we get here is six. Six is the smallest number where they match. So we have to have something under the common denominator six. So one half, well, we had to multiply by three on the bottom, so we have to multiply by three on the top. And then for one third to get to something over six, well, this three had to be multiplied by two, so the top has to be multiplied by two. And you could do it like that. Either way, you're doing the same thing. When you do it this way, though, you might not have to simplify at the end. So that's the, going to be the only nice thing about doing it this way. The bad thing is that it takes a little bit longer if it's not obvious what the common multiples are. So that was adding with different denominators. So we have to do one more thing with variables, and that's simplification. This is going to save lives. Not really, but it's going to save your, your brain just a bit of trouble on tests. So normally if we have a number like, say, 4 sixths, we can just say, okay, well, both are divisible by two, so we can break this down and say, this is two thirds. But when we have variables, we do something else. We say, okay, this is three times x over two times x. What's common in the top and bottom? Well, these x's are common, so we can just get rid of them. And we can say, okay, this is just going to be three halves. Because if you think about it, six over four is really just three times two over two times two. And these twos are common in the top and the bottom. So we just simplify it to three halves. Well, that's the same with the x's. It's the exact same thing. But instead of 2's, we're crossing out x's. So what about this y cubed over y squared? Well, to see this really nicely, we're just going to write y cubed as y times y times y. We're going to divide it by y squared, which is y times y. And let's just start crossing out some y's there. So we got one y on the top, one on the bottom, we got another y on the top, another y on the bottom, and all we're left with is y. So y cubed over y squared is just equal to y. And we'll see this rule more when we get to exponents, but I thought I'd introduce it now because it might be helpful just to see it before you have to actually do it. So here's some practice. Here's some addition and some division. So take a moment, pause the video, see if you can do it yourself, and I'll give you the answer. Okay, hopefully you had some time to get it right. Here's what we can do. We can do the cross multiplication trick. So this 3 over 10 is going to be multiplied by the denominator of 
the second term. So this will be 15 over 15. Then we're going to add 4 over 15 times, well, the denominator in this term is 10. So this is going to be 10 over 10. So we're going to get 3 times 15, which is 45 over 10 times 15, which is 150, plus 4 times 10 is 40, over 15 times 10 is 150. Now we can add these two together to get 85 over 150. And if you want, you can simplify it, and this will end up as 17 over 30. That looks right. Okay. For the second question here, we have to do some simplification first. So what is 2 minus 3 fourths? Well, I didn't explicitly mention this, but we can take a look as, at 2 as a fraction. We can say, well, 2 is actually just equal to 8 fourths. And then we subtract the 3 fourths. Because what is 8 divided by 4? It's 2. So 2 is 8 fourths. And this will be divided by, well, 1 is the same thing as 4 fourths divided by 1 fourth. So when we subtract, we're going to get 5 fourths on the top. We're going to divide that by 3 fourths. So what do we do when we divide fractions? Well, we just multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So it's going to be 5 fourths. We're going to multiply it by 4 thirds because the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 over 3. So then when we multiply this out, we're going to get 20 over 12, since 5 times 4 is 20, 4 times 3 is 12. And we can simplify this to 5 thirds. Okay, now let's do a more challenging problem. And what I want you to do here is I want you to simplify this. So take a crack at it, and I'll give you the answer in just a second here. Okay, so kind of tricky, and if you distribute some terms, it's going to get messy real quick. So we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to say is we're going to have 6x times x plus 2 on the top, and then we're going to divide by 12x squared, and let's simplify this x minus 3 plus 5. Okay, so x minus 3 plus 5 is actually just the same as x plus 2. So what we can do here is we can cross out these x plus 2s because they're similar. So now we're going to get 6x over 12x squared. So let's rewrite this 12x squared as 12x times x. And now we see these x's are similar, so we can cross those out. So now we're going to be left with 6 over 12x. And we can simplify this 6 divided by 12. And we're going to get this is 1 over 2x. Since if we have 6 over 12, 6 over 6 divided by 12 over 6 is just 1 half. So this 6, 12 just becomes 1 half. So our end result is 1 divided by 2x. So that is this function simplified. And you can see why simplification is very important. Because if it wasn't, then computing something like this would be really hard. Like what if I said, what if x is the number 6? What would our result be? You have to plug in a lot of values. Well here, if we say, okay, if x is equal to 6, then clearly this is just 1 12. It's pretty quick. But if you had to do it over in this left function here, 6x times x plus 2 over 12x squared times x minus 3 plus 5, it'd be a lot more work to get the same answer. So that was fractions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. You can check out trevtutor.com, and you can also share this with your friends. It'll help me, it'll help them, it'll help you, because your friends will be like, yo, Bob, thanks for the, thanks, thanks for the support. Or, hey, Jose, thanks, man. I, was, I, was, I don't even know what accent that was. Hopefully that wasn't offensive. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys next time.